What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Game week is here. We're just a few days out from the start of this thing. Facing the number four ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Couldn't ask for a much tougher opponent to start things out. Uh, we've got a lot going on today. We're going to be joined by Rusty Manziel at Dogs 24-7. Danny West is going to join us to talk about the game. Curtis Wilkerson is going to join us to talk about the game. We're going to answer your questions as well. All that and more on Hog Sports Live. This is, of course, your Arkansas versus Georgia primer. We're going to do this each week, obviously. Uh, before we get started, of course, i got to remind you, there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. Be sure to follow the page. We're trying to get to 80,000. I don't think we're going to make it. That was the goal, but we're we're just like 100 or so away from, from making the goal. So follow the page on Facebook Live. Interact with the video. Throw us a thumbs up if you like it. Also available on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel and throw us a thumbs up, like, or whatever you want to call it on YouTube and hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload a new video. You're going to want that. We also run the popular walk and talk on this channel too. So you're going to want to tune into that after the game also. Also available on Apple Podcasts. Throw us a five-star rating and leave a review if you like the content there. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. Hog Sports is 60% off right now. 60% 60% off. You can get it for 60% off or you can get it for a dollar for your first month. So it's a great time to sign up. Uh, for those of you who've known you, you've wanted the deal, you're just looking for the, the great deal, this is this is the best one that we'll offer for a long time. So 60% off right now at hawgsports.com. Okay. Crazy week. Football is finally here. A lot of you guys didn't think it would ever come. I always held out hope that it would. So here we are. Game week, tough opponent. I think that Arkansas is going to show some fight in this game. I think that they're going to show some pride. But in the end, they're just not going to have the horses to to beat Georgia. I think the depth will take over eventually, all of those things. I'm personally, I'm thinking 41-17. I actually think that Arkansas can score a couple of points here. But when you look at this Georgia defense, and that's kind of the area that I've been focused on a lot lately, um, you know, it's a very stout defensive line. Probably the best unit would, would be their defensive line, in my opinion. Uh, they didn't rack up just a ton of sacks last year. They didn't get in the backfield a whole lot when you look at where they rank nationally. But they only allowed 2.6 yards per carry. That's incredible because sacks and all that kind of stuff, that, that goes against rushing yardage in college. They only gave up two rushing touchdowns all of last year. They didn't give up a single rushing touchdown to a running back. That's outstanding. That, again, leads the country. I think that 2.6 yards per carry was second in the country, actually. Penn State, it was 2.55, so pretty close. Uh, But led the country in fewest rushing yards allowed, somewhere around 75 rushing yards allowed. So it's a really stout run defense, pass defense, too. When you look at the secondary, they're probably – and, you know, obviously you're still going to get – I think they still were a decent – you know, pass rushing team. They just weren't like in the upper, upper echelon. Uh, But when you look at their pass defense, they're probably not as deep on the back end, but they still got, you know, like a couple of five stars. They got three cornerbacks who started uh, at least 11 games uh, for them so far. Eric Stokes, um, LeCount at safety, who was a former five-star prospect, a three-year starter. So they've got some real good depth there too. And, And, you know, it's the same deal at linebacker. I mean, they've got a couple of guys at linebacker they lost here's what's crazy okay so they were the best run defense in the country or excuse me their best defense I think there was like 12.6 points per game right and that includes playing LSU put 37 on them 12.6 points a game to lead the country and then in yards given up I believe they were third at 275 I believe so uh it's just it's just incredibly stout. We're going to talk to Curtis Wilkerson. He's he's kind of been doing more of the offensive side of things. I've kind of focused more on the defense. Uh, and then, of course, of course, uh, Rusty Manziel. And then Danny's also going to chime in on some, some of his predictions as well. But I'm going right now. I'm thinking I'll just go ahead and jump out with my prediction. I'm going 41-17 Georgia. Okay. Uh, I think it's a, a situation where Georgia pulls away more at the end. I think that maybe there's a mistake given up here or there. It is the first game. You know, Dewan Mathis, who I think is going to be the starting quarterback, uh, is a guy that's got a lot of of wheels, a lot of potential, but hasn't started yet. In fact, compared to Felipe Franks, I think he's probably faster than Felipe Franks. 
but he's been compared to him at least as a recruit. He's just a redshirt a redshirt freshman. Um, but they're pretty they're pretty loaded up. I mean, as, as we'll talk to we'll talk to Rusty Manziel here. In fact, let me go ahead and get Rusty on the phone. Rusty is the his main deal is the recruiting analyst. Uh, for Dogs 24-7, which is a fantastic site. If you're a Georgia fan and you're watching this, you haven't come across it on YouTube or Facebook, go check those guys out at Dogs 247. They are uh, they are first class, top of the line. See how many rings it takes Rusty to get on. Hey, Trey. Hey, Rusty. How you doing, man? Appreciate you coming on. No problem at all, man. I was just giving a little introduction on you guys at Dogs 24-7. I'm sure there will be some – Georgia fans that will be tuning into this and maybe haven't heard when they come across it on YouTube or Facebook. But you guys just do a fantastic job, one of the elite sites in our network, and uh, we're certainly happy to have you on. I guess we, let's just jump right into it, Rusty. What do you, you – you you have, you know, a pretty, pretty good, uh, you know, working relationship with Sam Pittman. You know how that guy operates. What do you think yeah. that he can bring uh, to Arkansas, maybe from an outsider looking in? I think, first of all, obviously, you know, I'm not claiming to be the Arkansas expert, kind of know a little bit more about, the, you know, the program now that Coach Pittman's out there. Just talking to him a couple of times over the summer, and I'll tell you this, I mean, that man, um, that was the job he wanted. I mean, there's not another job. You can't throw this job. He's not looking to go anywhere. He's trying to get Arkansas back to where uh, the best days of Arkansas and – you know, it's going to take some time, and I know that probably is not what everybody wants to hear. It's going to take a little bit of time, but I'll tell you, I watch their recruiting and who they're recruiting and those guys they're bringing in. They've got two quarterbacks committed that are, you know, dual threat guys and guys that you've got to have. You know, to me, in the SEC, you may not have to have the elite roster to compete. you got to have a difference maker at quarterback. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll find out about Felipe Franks. I mean, he's got I, – I spent some time with him. Uh, saw him in high school, spent a whole week with him in Texas. He's a big athlete, big arm, you know, new scene, we'll see. But for the future, I think they got two kids committed that really look like they can be talented prospects. And I think Arkansas people, you know, I, I, I see the record. I, I know probably what you guys have been through the last couple of years out there, different changes. It's like, this is the right guy for this job. This guy wants to bring Arkansas back as bad as the fans do. He's not looking for the next job. I mean, he's home there. That's home to him and his wife. And, man, I tell you what, uh, it's funny. I, I talked to Trevor Lawrence's dad uh, earlier this week, and I still I still stay in touch with him once every month. You know, I'll talk with his dad. And he told me the other day, he said, man, really? And seriously, when I talked when, when when Georgia was really in this thing, he said they were in it because of Sam Pittman. Mm-hmm. And he told me, he said, Sam Pittman, I knew that my son was always going to be behind elite prospects, the best line, they were going to be well coached, and I could sleep at night with that. And Georgia was very much in that for Trevor Lawrence and because of Sam Pitt. Again, Rusty Manziel joining us with Dogs 24-7. And, Rusty, you know, when I, I look at the intangibles of this game, they that may be the one area where Arkansas has an edge. I might give them an edge at quarterback, although I, I've watched a lot. I watched the, uh, I believe we call it the, the G-Day game sure. from, from sure. last year. Uh, yes. I watched all of his snaps on YouTube. The guy's got uh, – he's listed as a pro-style quarterback. The guy's got some wheels, though. Yeah, and yeah. That, that was something that really uh, – didn't expect to see that. If you look at his recruiting profile, he's compared to Felipe Franks. Mm-hmm. Considering that he hasn't started yet, I might give Arkansas a slight edge at quarterback. Sure. The question becomes, sure. you know, can you protect him? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, but then the intangible aspects of it with having Sam Pittman over at Arkansas – Having Scott Fountain at Arkansas, nobody yep. knows Georgia's personnel better than the team that they're about to play in Arkansas because of that. Sure. So you might sure. give them the intangible for that. Of course, there's whatever home field advantage of having 16,500 fans there. Georgia's yeah. still got to travel at least, though, uh, and yep. quarterback. So that might be the edge, the areas that you, you would give Arkansas uh, an edge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you look at Felipe. He's been in the big battles. I mean, what you know, he's played LSU, he's played Georgia, he's played all Tennessee, he's played all these big deals. And you know, Jawan Mathis, you really kind of don't know. You know, he's that guy. And I think here's the thing about Jawan too. He kept growing. I think he was six four and a half when he got to Georgia. Now he's now he's six six. Uh, this kid's a tremendous athlete. This kid can really, really run. And I think the Georgia fans are going to see that like. This guy's a dynamic athlete at quarterback in a six-six frame. Uh, you know, can he process after the snap? What's he going to do? 
you know, after a turnover, those type of things, all those questions are going to be answered in due time. So nobody can predict that. Uh, but I do think Felipe, I think it was the right move for, for, for Felipe Franks. And again, I'll tell you, people that haven't seen Felipe Franks in person don't realize how big he is. I mean, this mm-hmm. is a kid, you know, I don't know what he weighs now. But yeah, I remember, about 230. Yeah, I remember when he, he and Jacob Eason walked in in San Antonio together. And I was like, my God, that is two big humans. And I was like, I can't believe Franks is that big. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I saw him as a junior in high school down in, in Florida. I went, I went to watch a practice one day. Uh, Georgia was really recruiting him. And, and, of course, LSU was involved too. So, uh, But Felipe, I think, seasoned. Yeah, I think. And you, you talk about Fernando Velasco. Fernando Velasco mm-hmm. probably knows that roster as good as anybody because he was the one of the day-to-day operation guys. So he was meeting with the players during the offseason. You know, he was that go-to guy. Uh, so now he's at Arkansas. So, yeah, they're definitely going to know Georgia's mm-hmm. roster inside and out. Uh, you know, you're Pat, right. This Pat Doty team. also. He was, Pat, uh, yeah. yeah, he's Pat, the director yes. of football yeah. operations at Arkansas yeah. now and was at Georgia yeah. as, a, as a, I believe, yeah. a grad assistant. Or, uh, sure. And you look at Jimmy Smith. I mean, Jimmy Smith, you know, didn't coach at Georgia, but Jimmy Smith knows all these kids. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? He was Cedar Grove and, and Georgia State. So he's been around. He's been going to Georgia camp. He took Cedar Grove to Georgia camp every single year. So they definitely are going to know. Uh, probably a, a lot more to what to expect of Georgia than what Kirby Smart and those guys will probably expect out of Kendall Browns. All right, Rusty, it's time. How do you see this one playing out, and what's your final score prediction? Uh, you know, I went I went round and round with this a little bit, and I know the spread's, what, 24 or 25 or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, this is going to be a game that's going to be very tough for Arkansas offensively because Georgia – uh, I'll say this for George Vance. I've said it for a long time. This might be the best defense George has ever had. I mean, yeah. they're absolutely loaded at every position, experience, big, strong guys. Offensively, what can they do and what are they going to show? You know, I went to the Vanderbilt game last year, and Georgia dominated Vanderbilt, but they only won 30-6 to six because mm-hmm. Kirby Smart, once he realized they couldn't move the ball, he sat down on it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I could see this game ending up, you know, maybe 34-7, to seven, maybe, you know, 30 to 10 or something like that. Um, you know, I think Arkansas has got enough guys. They got a really good running game. They can keep them in this game, but it's going to be tough sledding for Arkansas against that defense. And I'm just not so sure how much Kirby smart is going to turn to one Mathis loose in the first game. So I think it's going to keep things you know, probably interesting for a while, but at the end of the day, Georgia's defense is elite and it's going to be awfully hard for Arkansas to get anything established in my opinion. Arkansas is playing what may be the toughest football schedule in oh, college football history, so it's only fitting that they may start against what's arguably the toughest defense in all of college football. Wow. I mean, I, I don't know. I can't even imagine. Look, I know Sam Pittman is, is, the, is the happiest man on the on the earth to be the head coach of the University of Arkansas. That Friday night when that schedule come out, I'm not sure he was the happiest guy on the earth to be the head coach of Arkansas at that moment. But I tell you what, I just can't reiterate enough. That guy wants to be there. That guy's going to do everything that he can and work his tail off to get Arkansas back. And and, and I talked to him a little bit this summer, and he goes, look, when I was here, man, this place was rocking. You know, we were winning big games. And he goes, this is what this place can be. So I really just, you know, I really think, uh, you know, Arkansas fans dig in with this guy because he is going to do everything in his power, and he's not going anywhere. He wants to be there. He's going to get Arkansas back, and I really believe that. All right, Rusty. Hey, I appreciate you jumping on with us. Thank you, Trey. All right, thanks, Rusty. All right, that's Rusty Manziel. Again, I told you guys, we got to – those guys do a fantastic job, and it's not just Rusty um, who – I mean, you see there, I mean, fantastic job. Uh, Jake Rowe, who Jake did a five questions exchange with us earlier in the week. Um, just, I mean, fantastic, fantastic content from Jake Rowe. And then Kip Adams, of course, uh, who we haven't had on, but Kip does a fantastic job. Spent a lot of time with those three guys. When me and Danny were in Nashville right before all the coronavirus stuff broke out. Uh, just really good people. So anybody uh, who's a Georgia fan, or an Arkansas fan is looking for some information, I encourage you to go over to Dogs247, uh, 24-7, and, uh, and check those guys out. Appreciate you, Rusty. Okay. Where are we at here? I want to go over to my next guy here. Let's go to – let's see here. Let's go to Curtis. Let me get Curtis on the line here. So, 
Again, those who don't know Curtis, Curtis has been with us for a few months now, cranks out a ton of content. You can read his stuff at hawgsports.com. All right, we got Curtis on the line now. Let's see, where are you at, Curtis? Okay, here we go. Curtis, what's up? Trey, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. Just uh, just kind of previewing this Georgia game. So, this week you've kind of been focused a little bit more on the Georgia offense. I've kind of been focused more on the Georgia defense. Let's just jump into it. How do you see this thing playing out? Well, I, I've got to say I've, I've sipped the Kool-Aid a little bit as we get closer to game time, but I, I haven't necessarily poured a full glass for Arkansas. You know, I do expect the Hogs, I think, to come out and play with a lot of passion and energy for Sam Pittman, something that we haven't seen consistently in quite some time. And, you know, with Georgia's situation at quarterback, not knowing going into it here uh, as we speak, whether it's going to be JT Daniels, whether it's going to be Dewan Mathis, I could see them working out some kinks early on. And, and maybe Arkansas can be opportunistic, force a mistake or two, and make this thing interesting going into the second half. But, you know, honestly, at the end of the day, with, with Georgia's talent and the depth that they have, uh, I do see them ultimately pulling away. Yeah, I, I obviously think you're probably right. I don't think any self-respecting media person is going to pick Arkansas to win this game. Now, <laughs> things happen, as Houston Nutt says. That ball don't bounce straight up and down. But when you look at them, you know, uh, like with Dewan Mathis, he was listed as a pro-style quarterback on 24-7. So that's kind of what I thought – Arkansas was going to be facing I do think that's who it'll be but he's got some wheels I mean this guy can really run I spent some time watching some of his video last night it was like 12 o'clock at night and I'm like why am I watching this right now why am I going to sleep um, but he's got some wheels um, you know you you lose uh, Swift at running back but you bring you know you got Zamir White who was the number one ranked running back prospect in the country in 2018 I mean it's just like they can hit you a ton of different ways George Pickens and it's so much more than just those guys. Yeah, it's really true. You know, that's the thing. On on one side of the coin, you can look at it and say, well, you know, Georgia's lost a lot off of that offensive line. They, they lose guys like Jake Fromm and Swift. Uh, and you think, hey, you know, maybe Arkansas is in a pretty good position to take advantage of that. But you're right with the way those guys recruit year in and year out. They just reload with the same mm -hmm. level of talent. So, uh, you know, I, I watched a little bit of Dewan Mathis, too, and, and you're 100% correct. He can really move. Uh, sounds like Arkansas has been using Malik Hornsby, who uh, maybe not quite as talented, but has a similar skill set in the way that he can get out and use his legs to make plays uh, in a scout team situation. So hopefully they're prepared for that. It's been something that's burned the hogs in the past. I do think that Malik Hornsby is as talented. I don't know where you're getting that, Curtis. <laughs> I like, I like it. I like the optimism. <laughs> Maybe not as ready to go right now, but uh, I got there we go. Of, that's a that's a better way to put it. Future. Yeah. So <laughs> this offensive line, they they've lost three guys last year to the NFL, including two first rounders. But I mean, when you look at them, I mean, they're still just super, super. I mean, I remember seeing Ben Cleveland when he was 15 years old, and the guy looked like an NFL player already. I saw him up at Baltimore at a camp, and um, their center is very solid. They, they just Owen Condon is kind of taking it, you know, taking over that right tackle spot. I that, I think that could be one of the more interesting matchups because I do think Arkansas has some quality up front on the defensive line. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the defensive line for Arkansas that's that's one position that we've heard a lot of positive reviews from. Obviously, you know, Jamil Walker's done a really nice job of, of adding some size and some strength to Arkansas on both sides of the trenches. And, man, talk about a heck of a measuring stick your first game uh, to go against the Georgia offensive line that's got Sam Pittman written all over it. You know, it starts with Trey Hill there at center. You mentioned Ben Cleveland, who's somebody that they're really excited about. And then some of these prospects that are just going to be able to plug and play. And, mm -hmm. you know, Jamari Sawyer, uh, Warren Erickson, Justin Schaefer, uh, really they they were just able to, to kind of reload and uh, looks like it's going to be a, a typical Georgia line. It'll be interesting to see how they perform under Matt Luke. And it's more than – I mean, when you look at the receiving core, it's more than just George Pickens now. Well, Mathis or whoever the quarterback is, I think it's going to be Mathis again be able to get him the ball probably <laughs> but uh you know they've uh, they've got more than Pickens who had 49 catches for 727 yards last year with seven touchdowns um just talk about that what you've seen just from the receiver core again you know we just kind of broke things up you you focus heavily on the Georgia uh, on the Georgia offense I kind of focus on the Georgia defense 
this week? Yeah, so, you know, they, they did take a blow earlier in camp, losing uh, sophomore wide receiver Dominic Blaylock. Really a tough break for him. He, he tore his ACL, uh, I believe, during the SEC championship game last year and then came back to camp and, and retore that thing early on. But he was a guy who had over 300 yards receiving and five touchdowns for Georgia last year. So uh, a little bit of a blow there, but they do have a senior in Demetrius Robertson. Uh, had 30 receptions last season, 333 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, it's definitely going to be somebody that they'll look to to take a step forward this season. Uh, Matt Landers is another guy who's back, who really impressed in the Sugar Bowl last season. Um, had his first touchdown reception, a, a few catches there. So, um, again, it's a position that they're going to be able to, to kind of plug and play some really talented players and then you know you think about pass catchers and you look at that tight end position it will be interesting to see what they do there uh, lost both of their tight ends from last year and charlie warner and, and eli wolf uh, so they had to do some replacement there i uh, thought they were in a good position with florida state graduate transfer trey mckitty but he's listed as doubtful going into the game with a minor knee injury so uh, it'll be interesting to see who winds up there at tight end for the bulldogs all right curtis Now's the time. I want your score prediction, and I want to know how you see this season playing out. What's the final record? What are the games you think that they could possibly win? Well, I, I do think Arkansas is going to be able to take this game into the second half, but like I said in the end, I just I really see Georgia's talent and depth pulling away. Uh, I've got the Bulldogs winning this one 38-16, and you know, if it plays out the way I, I think that it will, there's going to be a lot of positives for Arkansas to take away from this. In terms of the season, you know, I, I do feel like we're gonna gonna break the streak here with the Razorbacks and get off the snide a little bit. Um, I see him winning a pair of games, uh, and that could be two out of really any group of, of Mississippi State. Hopefully, that's the first one. Just just get this thing over with and get rolling. Um, obviously, you like your chances a little bit against Ole Miss at home. And then Missouri at the end of the season, and and you never know. You know, there's a couple other games in there that I think Arkansas could compete and maybe surprise. When you think about the history with Texas A and M, and and maybe looking at a team like Tennessee, so there are some opportunities there for Arkansas to be competitive and get a few wins. Final record prediction: two and eight. Two and eight, and final uh, score prediction was thirty-eight. What? Thirty-eight sixteen. Everybody Georgia. loves thirty-eight. Everybody I, loves to pick the number 38. It's like, it's like, <laughs> you know, you don't want to go 40. That's too many. You know, you don't want to go 31 or 35. That's not enough. The 38 seems to be the number that everybody likes to pick. when It's, it's got to be the most popular number. for a You had my thought process down there. <laughs> hey, I wanted to, wanted to ask you real quick, Curtis, uh, while I've got you, any recent recruiting news uh, for Razorback Hoops that you can share? Yeah, actually, uh, the Razorbacks got some good news uh, just the other day uh, with with top 100 four-star prospect, the number one prospect in the class of 2021 out of Oklahoma, Trey Alexander. uh, Mm -hmm. Cut his list down to seven, included the Hogs along with with Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, Auburn, Georgia, Ole Miss, and Grambling State. So uh, good to see the Razorbacks make the cut there. He'd be a really nice addition to that recruiting class with guys like Chance Moore and Nicole Mawine. Uh, you know, earlier in the summer, it, it kind of looked like Oklahoma was in the driver's seat there, but it uh, sounds like Arkansas is very much in the mix and got some VIP stuff coming out on that here soon. All right, Curtis. Appreciate you, man. Anytime. All right. Again, Curtis does such a great job for us. Happy to have you, Curtis. Appreciate you joining in on us. All right, I guess we'll just go go to Danny now. Uh, let me see if I can get Danny on the line. For those of you who don't follow Danny's work, I mean, what are you doing? If you're a diehard Razorback fan and you're not following Danny West's work, what are you doing? All right, we got Danny. What's up, Danny? Hey, what's going on, buddy? Game week. Good to be on with you. Finally. I mean, right. uh, for a long time you didn't think it was going to come at all, and now, I mean, it's, what, three weeks late or something like that. But yeah. finally here, and uh, it's not an easy opponent, is it? No, it's a tough one. You know, it's it's a really tough one. Um, you know, we sit here and we go back and forth about Georgia's quarterback concerns and this and that. Let's not forget, that's a really talented team. They're number mm-hmm. four in the nation for a reason. And, uh, you know, it's a tough one, man. As you said there, it's a, it's a tough way to open up. But at the same time, you know, we made so much about 
the schedule, uh, the two additional opponents when that came out, Georgia and Florida, and then you have to start the year with Georgia. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, the closer it gets to it, it, you almost feel better about that. Go out there, and that's the ultimate measuring stick, is it not? Or a team like that, so I think yeah. you'll find out a lot about yourself. At the same time, you know, you would love to uh, to ease into the schedule yeah. a little bit with a team yeah. that you it's maybe have take. a better chance at beating. I mean, I don't think – you're not going to predict Arkansas to beat Georgia. I don't think most media people are. There's some fans out there that have taken, you know, a liter of Kool-Aid and, and are going to pick Arkansas to win that. But most people who can look at this team and say, okay, there's Georgia who's won 11 games in the regular season three years in a row, always in the top five in recruiting nationally. They just kind of reload. Uh, it's, just, it's just going to be a tough task for Arkansas. But I think you and me, you know, just kind of talking with you off air, kind of in the same boat that we want to see a team that gets out there and just fights and shows some pride and some respect for themselves, which just we just hadn't seen the last couple of years. Yeah, we want to be sitting here this time next week talking about, hey, that was, you know, they flashed there. They did some really good things in that game. And uh, I think we will. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, offensively, I think they're going to have some things, maybe some tricks up their sleeve. I think they're going to come out. and Early on in the game, Trey, I think you're going to see moments where you say, man, Arkansas is physical. They came to play. They're going to make a, a game out of this. And like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. And then over the course of the game, as it gets longer and longer, depth does come into play. And, and Arkansas, uh, uh, Georgia starts to lean on you a little bit, mm -hmm. takes advantage of some of your depth concerns. That's the, kind of the way I see it play now. Yeah, just eventually, I mean, as they say in this league, it's not about your first 11, it's about your next 11, almost yeah. almost as important. And that's that's what's kind of gotten Arkansas in trouble in the past, just, you know, throughout the season, uh, you know, as it wears on. Uh, and then, you know, of course, in this one, you don't want to play your starters every single snap because you get to the fourth quarter and, you know, that leaning on you starts to, uh, to take effect a little bit. So let's go ahead and ask Danny. Score prediction. I want to get. I want to get a few things from you. How do you see it playing out? You, I guess you kind of covered that. But what's your score prediction for this one? And also this season, I want a season record prediction. What are the games you think Arkansas can win? Okay. Yeah, we'll start with this game. How I see it. You know, just to kind of reiterate, there. I think even with Georgia having so many unknowns at at the quarterback spot, mm -hmm. as much as we both like Julius Coates and Dorian Gerald and uh, you know Marshall. We're, we have nothing to, uh, to to kind of sit here and say Arkansas is going to get after their quarterback mm -hmm. over and over and over again. I don't see it, especially going against a, uh, an offensive line that Sam Pippen built himself with the best of the best in the country, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, whoever their quarterback is, we think it's Mathis, but, you know, we'll see. I think he's going to have plenty of time to dish it out over the course of the game, get it out to his weapons, which they still have plenty of, by the way. And over the course of the game, I think, uh, as we mentioned there, the depth comes into play. And ultimately, I'm going 34-17. I think early in the first half, again, you're going to see some bright moments from Arkansas. But uh, it's just too much, uh, too much for Arkansas, especially right now, to kick off a, uh, a brand new season, brand new head coach, all of it. So I'm going 34-17. And and uh, in terms of the overall season predi prediction, I've got them three and seven. I think Arkansas sneaks up and, and gets uh, one more that maybe most people aren't given to them. So uh, I actually think Ole Miss, Missouri, and, uh, you know, I, I go back and forth on the Mississippi State game, but I still circle that Tennessee game mm -hmm. up here in, in Fayetteville. And uh, those would be the three I'm picking. Yeah, I think – I think those, you know, the four games, Missouri, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Tennessee, those are all games. And also, according to the ESPN FBI, that you, you'd say Arkansas has, you know, an actual chance at, at winning. I think that Mississippi State game were in Fayetteville, you'd feel a whole lot better feel about, really that about that week two. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But even on the road still, I think that there's you're, – you're right that there's a chance. Uh, I want to flip you over real quick to recruiting. I know you've, you've dished out a lot of recruiting articles uh, this week. And, again, for anybody who's interested in reading Danny's VIP stories, it's 60% off right now, and that ends Sunday. Uh, so if you want the insider recruiting, insider Razorback coverage at hogsports.com, go to hawgsports.com. You'll see where you can just sign up on the front page there. There's a banner ad. There's a join at the top right. There's no promo code or anything like that. You just sign up, and you will get the deal at hogsports.com. 60% off. It's a, it's a great deal. So, Danny, just kind of fill us in. 
tease a little bit, I guess, if you want to, uh, on this VIP content, just uh, what's going on lately with Razorback recruiting. Well, I think you've heard Sam Pittman even mention that lately. You know, you, you're so much, uh, you're so close with this 2021 class being filled that it's it's given you the uh, opportunity to get after some of these 2022s. And mm-hmm. with that, gives me the opportunity too, right? It's going to work ahead a little bit. And that's kind of where I've been over the last couple of weeks here, just hitting up a lot of 2022s. We've got a couple of notable uh, updates on a couple of in-state targets. Quincy McAdoo, Nico Davier. Obviously, big time guys here in our state, but Curly Thomas, I think that's an interesting name. Yeah, that uh, is. 2022 uh, defensive end out of Texas, really strong Arkansas ties there. So it was a lot of fun for me to interview uh, a fellow Arkansas native mm-hmm. and kind of hear his story and, and what that offer meant to me. So, you know, 2022 is upon us, and uh, that's just that's where my head has been for the last few weeks now. Well, I'm still going to take you back to 2021 because there's not a lot of spots left. There's only five. You count Jaqueline Crawford ahead to this class. So how do you think these last few spots – and it's tough because at the same time they pushed the dead period out, right, to January 1st. Uh, I thought Lucas Coley's mom had something interesting because Lucas is going to enroll, you know, January 6th, you know, and won't have the opportunity to come, you know, visit – and I mean, it's just it's just kind of crazy to me how that's set up. They've got to change something for these guys, especially who are going to enroll early, to be able to visit and and you know make an informed decision on what is the most important decision of their entire life to this point. So there's five spots left. We could obviously see a lot of fluctuation with the commit list, and I don't mean that's going to happen, but all across the country, you know, because these kids are less informed than they ever have been about picking the college. So how do you think these last five spots play out? I think you probably would say that they're going to hold some over uh, for possible transfers. Uh, but how do you think things need to play out? A couple of linemen, to be honest with you. I think uh, Arkansas is in a position now to be kind of picky, and I think that's what they're trying to do, especially on the offensive line. They feel good about the three they've got, but if you are to take a fourth, you want to feel really good about it mm-hmm. and not just take one just to take him, uh, you know, and, shoot, you'd almost be better off saving a spot. If it's not a guy you're 100% sure of, I wouldn't take a project as a fourth guy. You know, I'd rather see what the transfer portal might hold, right, Mm -hmm. after the first of the year. And that's the case, as we've talked about, with tight end, linebacker. You need probably to save a couple of these spots. But uh, from there, Trey, I would probably go deep tackle. You know, we're still waiting to see what Cameron Ball sure feels to be like. Uh, the Georgia Tech momentum is uh, starting to pick up there. Obviously, he was supposed to have committed uh, two days ago, September 22nd, and he decided to push that back. I think that probably hurts your chances a little bit the further he goes. But Albert Regis is a guy that I've still got my eye on, mm-hmm. uh, D-tackle. And then maybe maybe you squeeze in another DB. I'm not sure you have to. But, you know, if, again, if it's a guy you feel really good about and he's versatile with length and and checks all the boxes they're looking for, then sure, why not? But uh, that's kind of where it's at. You know, Arkansas is in no rush to close this thing out. I think they've made that very clear, and and they don't have to be. Mm -hmm. All right, Danny. All right, man. man. I think that'll do it. Appreciate you. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff, Danny. Appreciate you. Danny is the best recruiting guy in the industry, and not just Arkansas, but in the country. There's nobody doing better work, I should say. we got some really talented people at 24-7. So, thank you, Danny. Appreciate you coming on with us. Okay. We're going to get to your questions. But first, I want to I want to go over a, a story that Curtis had. It's, called five, it's a weekly feature that we're going to be doing. It's called Five Burning Questions and Keys to Victory. So, the questions that Curtis came up with, number one, and he goes into a lot of detail on these, and I'll let you guys ch- – uh, hop on there, but this is just some of the content that you can get at Hog Sports. Uh, is Sam Pittman ready for the moment? Number two, are the Hogs finally solid at quarterback? Again, we know they've started eight quarterbacks the last two years. Three, can the Hogs land the first punch? Four, what strides have the Hogs made in the trenches? And five, will Barry Odom's impact be felt right away? So those are his five questions. The keys to victory, people always come up with all these keys to victory. It's the same stuff, generally. There's pretty much four that are always going to be the same. 
So we we outlined kind of the same four keys to victory, and then kind of had a bonus question. Number one, penalties. I mean, you got if you're Arkansas, especially you cannot you cannot shoot yourself in the foot and make foolish penalties. And you probably could be aided in having the refs on your side. You know, somebody always ends up getting a little bit better um, better calls from the referee. So penalties is one. Turnovers is two. The team that wins turnover battle, I mean, that's that's usually a big indicator in who wins and loses, usually when they're even. You know, so for Arkansas, they need to, to win in that category. Special teams, special teams have been – I mean, they weren't just atrocious last year. They just weren't very good. Okay, they weren't ever a weapon for you. So, can special teams take a new step forward with Scott Fountain, with A.J. Reed, with George Caratam, with Traylon Burks returning? You know, all those, all those are – I mean, really just comes down to like executing for everybody else, for the other people on the teams, because those should be uh, in pretty good shape. Uh, injuries always play a factor, and not just injuries, but, you know, with coronavirus, you know, who's going to be missing here and there? So injuries always play a big factor. And then the five, the bonus question is preparing for the unknown. Now, for Georgia, they know less about Arkansas than Arkansas. You know, Arkansas knows a lot more about Georgia than, than, than the other way around. And, you know, they faced Felipe Franks a couple of times, so that's part of it. They maybe know some tendencies he has. But overall, Georgia um, is at a disadvantage when it comes to the intangibles we were talking about with Rusty earlier. All right, let's get to your questions. But first, got to make sure we run over this one more time because there's plenty of ways to watch and listen, people. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. Follow the page. Let's get us to 80,000. That's the goal. Follow the page if you haven't done so already. Also uh, available on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload a new video. Throw us a thumbs up or a like on both of those outlets. Also available on Apple Podcasts. Throw us a five-star rating and a review. We'd love to have that from you. We're almost at 500 total uh, ratings right now, so we'd love to get over that hump. And and available anywhere you can think of to find your favorite podcast. Right now, Hog Sports is 60% off for... Uh, an annual subscription, or just $1 for your first month. That's H-A-W-G-Sports.com. Go there and check it out. I mean, it's, it's a great time to sign up with the season starting, right? A season that a lot of people didn't think we were going to have. Uh, but we have a great subscriber base with all the features that we have, our VIP stories, the recruiting, the legendary Razor's Edge form. The 60% off deal breaks down to $0.12 cents a day, less than $0.12 cents a day, $0.83 cents a week, Three fifty-eight a month and build at just forty-two dollars and ninety-six cents for the entire year for the number one insider independent source on Razorback sports and recruiting. A great deal. Okay. First, let's go to our questions over at Hogsports.com on the Razor's Edge Premium Forum from our VIP subscribers. We're going to get to those questions first, and if we have time, we'll jump into some of the questions that have uh, popped up on Facebook. So Mr. Pig says, what level level of success do you feel the rush and pass has against Georgia? I think it's going to be a struggle. I mean, th- what Arkansas needs to happen is for some busted play. The fact that Georgia gave up two rush, like there wasn't even just like a, a misstep by somebody or a freshman came in or at the end of the game of a blowout. And there's, you know, their scrubs are out there and <laughs> didn't give up a rushing touchdown to a running back all of last season, still only gave up 2.6 yards of carry, to me is dramatically impressive. So they're going to have to get lucky in some sense that maybe Georgia is a little bit rough around the edges, you know, with the first game and everything that's happened around coronavirus. Or maybe Arkansas does some things that maybe they're not expecting. Something like that. Um the pass, I think that they have a better shot at throwing the ball, even though Georgia's starting secondary is really elite. I think that they probably have a better shot at throwing the ball. Uh, if they can get Felipe Franks into a groove, they've got some weapons in the passing game. It comes down to can they protect him. If they can protect him, then they can make some plays in the passing game. Mr. Pig goes on to say, even with the weight gain of our DL, I'm skeptical of us holding back Georgia's O-line. They are a true Pittman line and that they are massive. You know, I thought Pittman had a great quote. He's just kind of kicking himself. Why did I recruit that guy to Georgia? <laughs> Hog Nation 9 says, who scores our, our touchdowns? How many yards for Rakeem? And how many yards do we keep them to per carry? 
those are all very difficult questions. Who scores – you know, if you look at – we ran some polls, right? So who scores first for Arkansas uh, and all this stuff. It's a 10 poll. I think we had like 150,000 views on that one article. Uh, so people really uh, participated in that. It'll be fun to go back and look at. Who scores the first TD? It's hard for me to say Rakeem Boyd, given that they didn't give up a single rushing touchdown last year. But I'll say him. I'll say maybe Rakeem Boyd breaks the streak for him. How about that? How many yards for Rakeem? I don't think that he tops 100 in this game. I think we're probably looking somewhere around 60, 65. And that's just a testament to Georgia. Nothing about Rakeem. Georgia's just that stout. And how many yards do we keep them to per carry? How many yards for Georgia? I mean, they've got some stout running backs and a stout offensive line. I think they probably average over five yards a carry. Birminghog says, how Jerry Jack doing? Is house training going well? He pooped in the house three times yesterday. That's my our new dog. He's over here beside me asleep. He is 13 weeks old. Yeah, so, but, I mean, he can sit. He knows sit, shake, lay down, roll over, come, stay, watch me, leave it. He knows all those so far. We're kind of adding a new thing each week. Hog Nation 9 also says, if Mason... Danny Curtis and you were in a race in a 40 yard dash. How would y'all place? Well, Mason's like 20 years old. Curtis is a former collegiate athlete. I, I don't know. I don't know how fast Curtis is. I was always pretty fast though. I'll take me. I'll bet on myself. <laughs> Sam Pigman says, will teams release who is active inactive due to COVID and how will the game day roster be released? So there, you're not going to hear anything about that until probably right before kickoff. I mean, it'll probably be me like saying, like reporting, Hey, so-and-so is not out there. That's probably how you're going to find out when they're doing pregame stuff. Shivers 45 says, Trey, if you had to guess who leads the team in sacks and TFLs, I think Julius Coates will lead the team in both of those categories this year. I've just heard so many good things about him. If it's not him, it's going to be Dorian. Uh, but I think that Julius Coates has a chance to do that, who is Arkansas started Jack slash defensive end. Julius Coates, people are going to be surprised at how big that kid is. I mean, maybe against Georgia he doesn't look like super huge, but looking at the rest of Arkansas's defensive ends, he's just he's just so big. I mean, it's like a head taller than Matteo Soli. Hawk Savage says, who's the UGA player you're most interested in seeing match up against the Hogs? Well, quarterback, Dewan Mathis, I think is probably uh, the guy I'm most interested in seeing. As I was saying, it was like 12-18. I was like, what am I doing? Why am I watching Dewan Mathis highlights? But that's what I was doing last night, and the guy's a lot faster than what you would think because he's listed as a pro-style quarterback as a recruit, but the guy's got some wheels. 6'6", long. He can sling it too. He throws a nice, pretty ball. Good-looking quarterback. Now, that's one thing, you know, playing in the G-Day game and playing in practice. You know, it's a totally different thing on the road in the SEC, even though it's 16,500 fans and Arkansas hasn't had a lot of success. It's a totally different story. So, we'll see what happens if he takes a couple of shots. Maybe Arkansas can rattle him, just a redshirt freshman. Shivers45 says, Trey heard the last couple of years Arkansas was going to play fast in the hurry-up offense, but they never seem to be running fast. This year, do you finally see some up-tempo offense under Kendall Bryles? I think so. Just based on everything we've heard in practice, I think we're going to see that. And, it, again, you know, we were talking on drive time yesterday. It doesn't always mean just snapping the ball fast. It means getting to the line of scrimmage fast so they can't substitute. So, I think that they finally will – Last year they slowed things up and didn't do it because they didn't want to put the defense out on the field, but they were still going three and out more than anybody else in the conference. So it's like you you got to you got to be who you are. So hopefully they will. Hog forty three says biggest matchup this weekend in your opinion: Arkansas O line versus Georgia D line. Jerry Jacobs versus George Pickens. I would probably go with George Pickens. By the way, Jerry Jacobs be wearing number zero. I was just joking about this earlier when somebody said he's wearing number zero. I was like, if you're a D-back and you're wearing zero, you should only be able to wear it until you give up a touchdown, and you got to wear one. You give up another touchdown, you got to wear two. I'm just joking, though, Jerry. I mean, D-backs are going to give up touchdowns. They're just going to. It's the way the game designed. But Jerry Jacobs has had a really solid camp so far. But George Pickens, I mean, he's a, he's a special kind of, kind of player for him. Traylon Burks versus Richard LeCount. Richard LeCount's the five-star safety, three-year starter heading into this year. I'm, I'm, I think Burks is a special player. I don't know as much about LeCount, but 
I'm going to go with the offensive guy. The game's designed to go with offense, right? So I'll go with Burks. Julius Coates versus Owen Condon. Owen Condon is their right tackle who won the job, kind of came out of nowhere uh, to win the job. But, I mean, I know not a whole lot about either of these guys. It's just what I've heard in practice. What the heck, I'll go with Coates. Why not? I may not do that if you flipped it to the other side. Ricky Stromberg versus Jordan Davis. Let's see, Condon is the right tackle. So Coates, I believe, is going to be on the right side. So they're actually not going to match up that much. Ricky Stromberg versus Jordan Davis. I'll go with Jordan Davis. Not Nothing against Ricky Stromberg. That Georgia D-line is so stout. Arkansas linebackers versus Georgia running backs. Georgia running backs, hands down. I just don't have a whole lot of confidence in, in Arkansas linebackers. Depth standpoint, too, Zamir White. I mean, they, they've, they've got some studs. Georgia always has great running backs. I mean, you can throw it back. Herschel Walker, Dan Hampton, No. Sean Moreno, Garrison Hurst, Todd Gurley, <clears throat> Nick Chubb, Sonny Michelle. I mean, it's just on and on and on. Robert Edwards. I mean. Also, who performs better, Felipe or Mathis? I think I'll go with Mathis. Not because he's necessarily better, but because he's got better talent around him. I mean, they're going to have to protect Felipe. Mathis has a better chance of being protected. So I'll go with Mathis. RDJ703 says, what player will surprise us most for the Razorbacks on Saturday? Hmm. That's a good question. How about we go with... I want to stick with Julius Coates. I think people are going to be surprised how big he is. And uh, we just heard a lot of good things about him. So I'll, I'll go with Coates. How about that? Chubby Chaser 501. With no end in sight to the dead period, will we be able to hold the majority of our recruits who have not been to campus? I mean, I think so. I mean, it's not it's not like everybody else can have them on campus in Arkansas camp. Shivers 45 said, Trey, if you had to pick, who's going to have more of an impact for the Hogs this year, Devion Warren or TJ Hammonds and why? a good one I think I'll go with man that's a tough one I think I'll go with TJ I think so the reason I'm going to go with TJ is because I think he's flashed more at wide receiver than Devion has Devion's done some good things in special teams but you know TJ has had some moments especially you know you go back to the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers uh, really saved that game really probably saved Brett Bielema in that game from being fired on the field so I think I'll go with TJ I just think he's got maybe I think it's really close. I mean, it's just a guess more than anything, to be honest. Sparks Co. says, give us a key for Arkansas to remain competitive into the second half on Saturday. I mean, I think Curtis had some great keys, some great burning questions. You know, I think come out, maybe strike first. If you can do something like that, have Georgia. I mean, I hate to say it's on Georgia a lot, but have Georgia make a mistake, a fumble, a turnover, a penalty that puts them way back, getting getting sacked that puts them way behind the chain, something like that. And you have Arkansas maybe score first and then maybe get the ball back, win a little bit of possession stuff. But Arkansas, they can't have penalties. They can't have turnovers. They got to they gotta win on special teams. I mean, those three things are huge. And, and also, I mean, injuries uh, injuries are going to – you know, injuries and, you know, people missing from COVID, that's going to play a role in this game. Possibly. I think it is. For one team or both teams. Sparks says mine is avoiding negative plays, yes. Pre-snap penalties, Yes. Third and five is a victory every time. Mountain Hog says, game on the line. You're marching down the field with two minutes left. That would be fine. I mean, right now, I mean, obviously, you, you would, if, as a Razorback fan, you're going to be wanting to cheer for it. But right now, if you said that Arkansas and the game is on the line with two minutes left, every single person would take that. I mean, Burks has been doubled the entire game. Who do you throw the ball to if you're Franks? I think that Trey Knox is being overlooked. I think he's being overlooked. Now, I'm not saying he's going to come out and have a great game, but he's 6'5", 207. This guy had 21 catches for like 299 yards and I think maybe three touchdowns, two touchdowns in the first four games last season. And then the last seven games, it's like eight catches. I mean, it's – he did, he had that hip pointer or took a shot on the hip. I guess it was a hip pointer uh, against Ole Miss in week two and just got worse and worse and worse. All right. So I think he's a guy that maybe people are overlooking a little bit. But I would say I would throw it to uh, 
throw it to Knox. Or maybe try to get Rakeem Boyd. He certainly worked on the passing game a lot this offseason. One of the reasons he came back is they didn't know how good of a receiver he was, even though he had 19 catches last year. Hog fan in KS16 says, if we upset the dogs on Saturday, can you do the walk and talk while rushing the field? <laughs> sure. <laughs> PR Willis 11 says, what's the difference in game day going to be for you as a media outlet compared to normal game besides limited press co- passes? This will be the first game in over a decade that Danny and I hadn't sat together for a home game. Uh, so there's that. I assume I'll be social distanced with other people in, in the press box. I'll be wearing a mask. Won't be able to go down after the game field level. Won't have in-person interviews after the game. Um, we usually have four people in the press box from Hawk Sports. We'll have just me this time. So a lot different. Will all the media be on press box or place in different areas? What's the game look like if it's Zoom? Where will the media Zoom from? Just from the press box after the game. That's where we'll Zoom from. Um, and everybody will be in there. Now, cameramen and stuff will be like, there'll be a camera guy sitting in the stands. You know, so it won't be like cameramen and, you know, photographers all over the field and stuff. They've also expanded the the player box to the 15-yard line, so that'll be a lot wider also. I'm anxious to see, I mean, more than anything, going to the game, I'm anxious to see what the environment is like. And I have to be honest, for this game I'm going, obviously, for that primary reason. But if I feel like it's better watching the game on TV – than being at the game because you you miss – a lot of the pageantry stuff is, is going to be gone. Running through the A is gone. You know, the band's not going to be taking the field at halftime. Um, you know, there's no post-game press conference, all that stuff. There's no reason for me to get down on the field pre-game. You know, all of those things are gone. So, But if I think it just kind of, you know, well, this kind of sucks. You know, I'd rather be watching it on TV where they pipe in crowd noise and all that stuff. I may do that. I don't think I will, but – I don't want to just sit there and it just kind of like, meh, this isn't very fun. Hog Farm 81 says, do we know which quarterback, UG, which UGA QBs are traveling? We know Dewan Mathis. I don't think Dewan Daniels hasn't been – or excuse me, uh, Dewan Mathis, but I don't think uh, JT Daniels has been uh, cleared medically, so I wouldn't assume he would he would travel. Ben Strosity says, do you believe Arkansas will have the stamina? I mean, JT Daniels may travel. I mean, who knows what they're – 70-man travel roster will look like with COVID and stuff, so maybe he will travel uh, just to, to get him used to it. Ben Strossi said, do you believe Arkansas will have the stamina to stay strong after the half this weekend? When do you think the fatigue will start to show? I think probably fourth quarter you run into some issues with that. Georgia's definitely deeper than Arkansas. Arkansas is going to have to play their starters probably more, um, especially with you know if they're missing people with coronavirus, So whether it's coronavirus or contact tracing. So – I just want to see Ben, I just want to see them get to halftime, right? We're so used to seeing that stadium just completely empty out. And, you know, obviously it's going to be a little more empty, but um, the game's just over at halftime too often. So to me, I want to see the game go to halftime and like say, okay, hey, they're fighting, they're playing, they're showing some heart. They got a good game plan. They prepared well during the week. You know, I want to be able to say those things at halftime. And I'll take that, to be honest with you. I mean, that's a step in the right direction. Obviously, yeah, you want to see Arkansas come out and do well and go way beyond expectations, but I'm going to temper them. I'm not going to, I'm not going to drink any Kool-Aid or anything like that. Ben Strassi also says, do you think we will get the same 2018-19 Felipe Franks, or does he have the potential to be even better than that with his time he's had with Browse? I mean, Florida has better talent. So, I mean, he could be a better quarterback and put up worse numbers. Also, Ben Strassi says, I hope that we see Jerry Jacobs truly earn that zero jersey. Yeah, I don't think they just gave that out to give it out, right? don't think they just gave it out to give it out. Okay, where are we at here? 53 minutes in, so we're well over. Let's see if we got any great questions here. Need great questions only. Ethan Roberts says, Trey, please explain your opinion on why Ole Miss is projected to win four games and why they're so much better than Arkansas. I don't see them is that good along with state and Mizzou love your show. I don't know. I mean, that I, I, to be honest with you, I haven't really dove into Ole Miss a whole lot just yet, but I do think that Arkansas, I can just say Arkansas has a chance to win that game. I absolutely think they have a chance to win the game. It's in Fayetteville too. 
Mark Harris says 3117 Georgia, but I think we see more complete. Uh, 3117 means they fought and played a good game against a much more talented team. A lot of comments. Hogs got to crack 20 points. I think they will, but come up a little short for that reason, going with 31-17. Hope this coaching staff hangs around for three years. I mean, I could see Barry Odom hanging around a couple years. I could see Bryles hanging around a long time. I really could, unless there's like a, a head coaching offering somewhere out there. I mean, ideally, here's what happens ideally. Ideally, you have so much success with Pittman. He's here for – eight, ten years. He's, what, 57, 58. Um, so he's here eight years or whatever. And then, you know, whether Browse continues to stay or leaves, maybe Browse comes back one day and he's your guy. Or maybe it's Odom one day, you know. That would probably be a good situation. Alan Wayne Gill says, you may have addressed this before I logged on, but we know for a fact any projected starters won't be playing. No, we don't have any of that. A lot of high schools around here are canceling games. I mean, just talking with Rakeem Boyd, he sounded like things were really good. Now, we know that they test on Sunday. You get your, te- your results back Monday. They test on Wednesday, so they'd be getting their test back today. So today's a big day. And they test on Friday with a rapid response test that gets back results in 15 minutes. So things could change between now and then. All right. Trey, if the Hogs pull the unthinkable, how hype can we be for the walking dog? <laughs> if 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 Arkansas pulls the unthinkable, I don't know what I'll do, but it's gonna be a good walk and talk. I can promise you that. It may be a it may be a long one. Okay, let's see. Chris Hall says the thing that excites me the most hearing the players say they want to play for their teammates and their coach. When was the last time we heard that? It was absolutely not the case last year and the year before. Randall Fowles says, do you see our receivers being able to separate from the Georgia corners? It seems that last year they just couldn't get much separation. I I don't think that was a big problem last year. I think the problem last year was not having a quarterback that could consistently get the ball to him. So if Arkansas can protect, if Franks isn't off his game, then I do think that Arkansas has the talent at wide receiver to compete with those guys. I mean, Georgia has a really talented secondary. Arkansas has really talented wide receivers. I don't – I'm not going to sit here and say that, like, they're here and Arkansas is here. I think they're probably maybe here, really. The question is everybody around them. Can Arkansas get them the ball? Do they, do they get the protection that they need against that stout defensive line? Those are the questions. Traylon Burks can get separation. Trey Knox can win jump balls. Okay, the game is designed for receivers. You know, if everybody's in perfect position, then the receiver's catching the ball, generally. All right. Jimbo James says if we score 14 points, it'll be okay. Uh, Maybe close. Close to okay. Keegan Ray, Ryan Gomer says, do you think K.J. Jefferson will get in the game? If so, do you think we will see him more developed? I think if you see him in the game, it probably like for like an extended period, it's probably not a good thing. It probably means an injury or Felipe's not playing very well. I would just like to see one quarterback make it through the game because he's playing well. Uh, except for I could see maybe packages, short goal line stuff that maybe they incorporate KJ Jefferson in. Maybe a trick play, something like that. Brad Massey says, not best been said about Frank's ankle and his mindset. Is this going to affect his performance? It seems like it's been okay. I mean, he's – I mean, it seems like he's been okay. I mean, just based on everything he said. So, hope so. Chris Bacon says, don't forget about Todd Gurley. I think I mentioned Todd Gurley. Maybe I didn't. Chris Bacon says, Trey Knox is being looked over, prototypical wide receiver. With Arkansas – Aaron Anderson, with Arkansas State's game being rescheduled two weeks in a row, do you worry about the Razorbacks getting rescheduled sometime? I mean, yeah, I think it's possible. And now I do think that the lowest chance that Arkansas has of – Arkansas player would have of, you know, contracting coronavirus is in a football game. I think that's the lowest chance that they have because everybody's tested the right before. Everybody's in their home hotel room, one person per room. I mean, when you consider all that stuff – you got a better chance just walking around outside, 
of getting coronavirus than you do actually playing the game. I, I, I'm not a scientist, but if you're testing everybody right before with these rapid response, you tested them two times before in the week, and you don't, you know, everybody else gets quarantined away, then I, I, I just don't see the huge threat of, of getting it in a game. I mean, it's a virus. It's designed to spread, so I guess it's possible, but I think you have a better chance of picking it up somewhere else. Blake Manis says, nobody talking about how a 4-8 and eight South Carolina team went into Athens and upset Georgia last year. That's true. Also, Sam Pittman was a part of a team that – a team to see the keys of South Carolina upsetting them. Not saying it's going to happen, but it's not impossible. I may ask Sam that at 2. We get him at 2 o'clock today. I may ask him about that. So, in Arkansas, it's not like Arkansas has never shown that they can compete. Look at the Texas A&M game last year. They could have won that game. They could have beaten Kentucky last year. I mean, I'm just saying, like, before they completely let go of the rope and quit on the head coach, they showed some – They had, there were some moments. Good question, Blake Manis. I'm going to bring that up to Pittman today. How will Mike Woods finish up this year? He's ready. I think Mike – I think Mike is an underrated player for Arkansas. I don't think he's on the same level as Burks and Knox, but I think he's a quality receiver in this conference. Let him in catches last year. All right, everybody, that's it. That'll do it. And I guess next time we'll be talking to you, it'll be, unless there's a, some emergent reason to do an emergency podcast or something, some breaking news happens, the next time we'll be talking to you is when I'm exiting the stadium, walking to my car, hopefully not pissed off, doing the walk and talk. If you like the stuff that we do at Hog Sports, if you like this video, if you like the walk and talk, if you want to support what we do and get something out of it that's fantastic with our VIP Razorback coverage and recruiting coverage, sign up for this 60% off deal. The show's over, so go sign up for it. Go to hawgsports.com. You're going to be happy you did. Okay, We're one of the 10 largest subscriber sites in the entire 24-7 sports network. I don't have to tell you what the state's population is and what the market size is. We shouldn't be in the top 10, but we are because we dedicate everything that we have to that site. We put so much effort into it, okay? And that's the reason that we have such a large subscriber base. So come join us, see what we're talking about. It's a great time to try it out at 60% off for the annual or $1 for your first month. Two great ways to sign up. All right, appreciate Rusty Manziel for joining us. Great insight from that guy. Go check, go check out Dogs 24-7 uh, for, for everything that Rusty, Kip, and, um, of course, Jake do fantastic guys over there uh, doing a great job covering Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, appreciate Curtis Wilkerson, of course, for his insight, and Danny West as well for his insight and recruiting news. Uh, and I guess thanks for Curtis for his basketball recruiting stuff. Can't wait till you guys see what Curtis brings to the table when basketball season starts up not too far away, November 25th, first game for that. So for Danny West, for Trey Biddy, for Rusty Manziel, for Curtis Wilkerson, for all four of us, thank you for your questions. I'm going 41-17 Georgia. I'm going 2-8, and eight, even though I'm tempted to go 3. But I'm going to go 2-8. and 2-8 eight. and eight on the season. But some reason to be encouraged for the future. All right, everybody. This has been Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com. We'll catch you next time.